Amen. Thank you guys for being here today. Listen, listen, I, I'm going to help somebody today, man. Look, look, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just going to help somebody today, man. Is that all right? Is that all right? I'm going to help somebody today. Listen, today, today, I want to talk to you. I want to, I want to step through this particular pericope, this, this, this space, uh, this, this. I do this for a living. Y'all know that, right? I want to step through this particular uh, phrasing in scripture. Uh, just, a, just a small moment. And I love this. If you, if you read through um, any of the gospels, you just get these small moments where Jesus shows up, does something crazy, and then they just keep going. Like Jesus just shows up and does. You know, you know Pastor Kevin, it's, it's, it's so um, easy to miss the blessing when you're used to it. It's so easy to miss the miracle. Some of y'all's proximity to miracles is so great that you're missing them. Your proximity to miracles is so great that you're starting to miss them. In fact, some of y'all just forgot to, when you woke up this morning, to just say, whoa, my heart's beating. I didn't make it beat. Some of y'all woke up this morning and you, you, your lungs were working and you didn't do anything to, you didn't have to turn them on. You didn't have to charge them last night. They still got power. Oh, Jesus. Some of y'all should just jump out your bed and just start saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everything, the things that were broken yesterday are fixed today, Lord Jesus. Because I was exhausted when I went to sleep. But I woke up refreshed and ready to give you praise and honor and glory. I'm not so far from the miracle that I can't see. Oh, Jesus. That I can't see what you're doing in my life. And if, you, if you're not careful, then you'll just read miracle after miracle after miracle. And you'll miss the miracle because your proximity to the miracle is you're too close to it. Some of y'all, you don't realize how much your kids are a miracle. So, some of y'all, you, you, you can only see their report card. You can only see their, their behavior. I don't even know what report cards look like no more. I'm, just, I'm out of that game. Thank you. Oh, speaking of miracles. Thank you, Jesus. Um, no, no, no. I pray for you, though. Um, but sometimes you can look. Hear, hear me right here. Sometimes you can look a, 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 and see a, a miracle or miraculous thing and think it's normal. The fact that that child came from you. Man or woman, it came from inside you. That thing did not exist, and you brought it into existence. Lord, and you got the nerve to be mad at it every day? It's not in my notes. I just feel like I'm helping somebody. Your proximity to the miracle can make you miss the miracle. And so this, we, we, have, this, we have this young lady, and, and we know she has a proximity problem. Because the Bible says that she comes into the synagogue... Every day, she comes into the synagogue, she, she, she knows how to go to church, but she has a proximity problem because the, the, the truth is she shows up to church on a regular basis, but she leaves just as broken as she was when she showed up. This looks like the modern day church. We show up bent over. We leave bent over. We show up broken, we leave broken. We show up hurting, we leave hurting. We show up, uh, uh, the, the lady said she had an infirmity. Somebody say infirmity. 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 Somebody say infirmity. infirmity. Infirmity literally just means disability. Sometimes it reads as sickness or whatever, but I need you to understand this. It's a disability. Somebody say disability. Pastor Dante, what's a disability? Well, dis means literally the etymolo etymological version of dis is just this, the opposite of. So whatever you put dis in front of, you mean the opposite of that thing. If she has a disability, she has the opposite. Okay, y'all coming along with me, right? She, she, ha she has the opposite of ability. She has the opposite of ability and she brings it to church every 
Sunday, the opposite of ability, the opposite of ability. And so many times I find myself talking to people who bring the opposite of ability to church. Every time you come to church, you bring your cats with you. I can't do that. I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not able to do this. And, 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 and really, it's your disability that's coming to fruition. Some of y'all won't even leave your house without your canes. You put them in your purse. I can't do this. I can't stand. <laughs> you, 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 you put them in your wallet. You bring them to work with you. Soon as somebody say something, oh, no, I can't do that. No, no, no. Where is, where is your ability? Because you'll be blessed for your ability, but cursed by your disability. Are y'all with me today? You'll be blessed for your, with your ability, but cursed by your disability. And this person shows up to the house of the Lord. And the Bible says for 18 years, she had a can't. I can't do this. I can't fix this. I, I, I can't. I gotta, I, I'm, I'm bent over. And a lot of times, this is, I, I, I love this because uh, you, you'll go to people who are labeled disabled and you'll realize that they can do more than you. Because even though they have a disability, oh Jesus, it hasn't stopped them. They still have a can in their spirit. Yes, I can. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. And it, what if you, who had all your legs and arms and, and working everything, what if you had a can in your spirit? Some of us, our only disability is mental. Because we've decided that we cannot do what God says we can do. Does that make sense? Okay. And so she shows up to this place and she, she shows up and she shows up for years and years and years with the same infirmity, with the same sickness, with the same disability, with the same, uh, with the same problem, the same issue. And the problem is, my problem is that she kept coming to the same place and kept leaving the same place and nobody had the power to heal. In fact, Pastor Kevin, if we, if we keep going on, and, and Jesus says this, when he sees her there, oh, I love this. The, the first thing is Jesus saw her. Oh, man. I'm not going to have time to finish this. The first thing is Jesus, where's Malone? <laughs> I'm not going to have time to finish this. Okay. The first thing is, that's an inside, I'm sorry. Okay. The first thing is he saw her. I want you to understand something. A lot of y'all came here looking for God, but the truth is God came here looking for you. He came here with his eyes on you. Uh, the, the Bible says if his eyes is on the sparrow, oh, Jesus, then he must be watching me. He must be looking after me. Now, that's good news because you thought God forgot about you, forgot about your situation, forgot about your circumstance. You just got so used to being broke. You thought you was always going to be that way. You thought you got so used to being disabled that you thought you were always going to be that way. And the chain breaker so shows up and says, boy, I've been looking for you. He sees you. He sees you. He sees you. That should be a moment to just celebrate God right there. That, that, that in the midst of everybody, in the midst of the crowd, in the midst of everybody who shows up, he saw me. He sees me. He sees me. He sees me. He sees me. A lot of y'all come to this church because you can just get in and out and nobody sees you. I could, I could get in and out. There was this, I was another little young lady. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say her name, but she was so quick. She was going here for months. She'd sneak in right at 12 to 2. She might hug one or two people, just find a seat, sit down, right at the, when the, when the church dismissed. Her car was the first one out the parking lot. Some of y'all, I just described your whole life right there. It was, it was like, he talking about me. That's like half of y'all in here. Don't want to hug nobody. Don't want, I just want to go in here and get this little word, and then I'm going to go home. And God said, no, 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 I won't let, I see you. Listen, I, ooh, I want to move on, but God says he sees you, 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 he sees you. He sees you. trying to hide, but no, no, no. He said, I see you, baby. I see you, daughter. I see you, son. 
I see you when nobody else does. I see you when you feel like you're not being acknowledged or when you feel like nobody loves you or nobody. I see you. I see you. I'm looking at you. When nobody, when you feel like nobody calls your name or you haven't had an award or a certificate given to you, God says, I see you. I see you. I love this. Jesus says, I see you. She didn't ask him for a thing. He just said, hey, I, I see you. Hey, 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 I see you. Hey, 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 I see you. Hey, I, I see you. Boy, that's a, that's a great God. And all the people that he preached into, he see me. All the people that here, while on others that are calling, do not pass me. So, so Jesus sees her. The first thing he does is he sees her. Then, then he calls her to him. Boy, I could, I could, woo, I could preach from right there. Because some of y'all, Jesus saw you and then he called you, but you didn't respond. And you've been, you've been showing up to this place. Oh, I don't want to make this about this church, but I need you to hear me. I'm, I can only preach to the people that God sends here. <laughs> no man comes to the Father unless he is by the Spirit. But, but, but you, you've shown up to this place and you hear the calling. You hear the calling. You hear the calling on your life, but you're ignoring it. You hear the calling to do more, to be more, to, to step up, to serve. You hear the calling, but you're ignoring the calling on your life. I'm here to remind you that God is calling you, and when he, listen, when God wants you, it ain't nothing you can do about it. No shadow he won't light up, mountain he won't climb up, coming after me. Okay. Y'all thought it was beautiful when he was like, coming after me. But the truth is, he's charging after you. He's racing after you. And all hell going to break loose in your life until you answer the call. That's on your life. There's a call on your life. Amen. Amen. So Jesus calls her over to him. And I love this because she, she, she have no problem. She gets up with her doubled over self. She gets up with her old broken self. With her, with her infirmity self. Y'all want me to feel sorry for her, but I, I'm not going to feel sorry for you. I'm not going to feel sorry for her. But her doubled over self, her broken over self, she says, uh, God, I, I don't have much, but I'm coming. <laughs> God, I haven't figured it all out, but I'm coming. I think I heard you calling me and I'm coming. I, I, I haven't figured this all out. I don't, even, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. I didn't even grow up in church. I don't really know the right things to say or when I'm supposed to say amen. In fact, I feel like I'm standing up in front of the person who's trying to see behind me. But I really got to come when God said he's calling me. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm so sorry that I got to stand up right now. But God is calling me and I can't be worried about how you feel about it or what you think about it. God is calling me. I I know you think I'm not good enough to be a Christian. I know you think I'm not good enough to wear a collar. I know you think I'm not supposed to be. But God is. I can't do nothing about your feelings. God is calling me. I can't do nothing about how you feel about me. God is calling me. She gets up with her doubled over self and she makes her way to Jesus. I love this. I love a couple of things. The first thing is that she is doubled over. Somebody, somebody say doubled over. Double. This, this corresponds with an idea of a weight that's on her life. I love that it doesn't say what, what her infirmity is, just that she has one. First thing I need you to get is this. Okay, the first thing I need you to get is that she doesn't have a name. She doesn't have a name. Now, some of y'all been going here long enough to, that you understand when the Bible doesn't give her a name, what it means is insert your name. When the Bible says the woman with the issue of blood, it means you. When the Bible says the woman at the well, it means you. When the Bible says the man with the demonic spirit, it means you. When the Bible says Peter, it means Peter. Y'all got me. Okay. All right. So, so, so this young lady, she, she's, 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 Jesus calls out to her, but he, he doesn't call her by her name. I think that if he would have said her name, then you would have attached her name to her chains. 
And when I get delivered from this chains, when I get delivered from these chains, I don't want to be known by my chains. I want to be known by my... Okay. Okay. Because that's how y'all do people. You call them by their chains. You, you call them by their... You know them by their chains. You be like, you, you, you know... Um, uh, I be, it's a lot of y'all in here. I try not to use y'all names. You know Tisha, you know drunk Tisha, like Tisha that's always drunk. You know, you know Tisha, she be drunk all the time. Everywhere we go, she be drunk. You didn't attach that girl's name to her chain. So now even when she saved Tisha, to you she's still drunk Tisha. Some of y'all not getting this because the truth is somebody attached your name to some chain. And I came here to set you free today. My chain is not my name. Do not get it mixed up. That is what I did. That wasn't who I was. I stepped out of that. I don't want to be known by my chains. I want to be known by my... When you come into proximity with Jesus, then, then you find identity. Identity is the place where he, the Bible says he tells you your name. Lord have mercy. I want to serve a God who knows my name. Not just my chains. The Bible says he called her to himself. I, I, I want to free you today from the chains that people called you. Some of y'all still stuck in. You 50 years old. They still call you junior. You in the same place where they met you. No, no. Let me grow up. My name is Michael. Let me grow up. My name is... No, I'm not junior no more. Let me grow up. Don't attach my name to my... So, so, next point. I got to move on. Okay. So, 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 so the next point. He calls her to himself. She, she comes... She, she, I, I love this, <laughs> Pastor Ravon, the Bible says that she gets up and she comes to him, recognizing that she has a disability, an issue, and everybody's going to see it. But you see how she doesn't have shame. She has chains, but she doesn't have shame. See, shame can become a chain itself, and it'll keep you chained up. You got to loose the chain of shame. The first thing is, if you're ever going to be free, that's why we ask you to take a step to come to the altar, because that step is a breaking of oh, Jesus. That step, when we say come up this way, or when we say lift your hand, what I'm saying is break the invisible chain that kept you bound in that same seat. God said, I'm about to do a new thing in you. But first, you got to take us and break the chain of shame. Some of y'all been living under the same shame for years. The same shame for years. I used to be ashamed to tell people how old I was. Because my son was only 17 years younger than me. And when you have a 10 year old and you're 27, sometimes it's difficult to try to explain people the circumstances by which he was reared and to explain to them that I, I'm, not, I'm no longer that person. Wait, 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 wait. I know in your mind, I may say, okay, oh yeah, you did the math. Okay, you're a mathematician, but I'm no longer that person who you said I was. In fact, I married his mama and we've been married for 10 years now. And now, and now we have a life together and we're buying our first house together. And we're, see, see, I'm not stuck in the chains of where I used to be. It looked bad to you. But now... He got his own house <laughs> and his own wife and I was a 37 year old empty nester <laughs> it was hard then but it got easier wait 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 the latter rain shall be greater than the former okay all right 
But if you let chain hold you, if you let shame hold you down, you won't be able to celebrate freedom. The Bible says she came even with her shame. Yeah, I've been coming here and I don't really know if this is going to work, but I'm, I'm telling you what, I'm, I'm going to come, Jesus. I'm just going to come over her. I'm just going to come over to her. I, I, don't, I don't even know if you're able to do what they say you're able to do. I, you know, I heard you did it for my mama and I heard you did it for my dad, but I'm not really sure because they went to a different kind of church. They lived in a different kind of world than I live in. And I don't know if you still do miracles like you used to. I don't know if you still bring sight to the blind. I don't know if you still bring healing. And, and what I want to tell you right now in this short little intermission is the same God who did it for your mama will do it for you. The same God. God who did it for your dad will do it for you and even if they didn't do it for them God still he said I'll step in and I'll break the generational curse right here it'll end with you God says if you have the courage to break the chain of shame all the other chains will fall off have the courage to break the chain of shame so she started coming that way she started coming that way. He, Jesus asked her a simple question. He says, he says, he says this. He says, he, he, it's, it reminds me of another story where there's a man and Jesus calls him. He, he looks at him and he's, he asks him a simple question. He says, hey, will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? And I, I thought about that, Pastor Kevin, because these stories contrast to me. One of them is a woman. The other one is a man. They both have ailments. One of them is, well, listen, one of them is lame. That means he won't move at all. The other one is doubled over, but she trying. Oh, somebody should have heard me right there. I'm doubled over, but I'm trying. I haven't got it all right, but I'm trying. I still smoke a little bit, but I'm trying, G. I still, oh, Jesus. I still drink a little, but I'm trying, G. I'm doubled over. Brother was lame. They said he was lame. He just wouldn't move at all. Now, lame usually means your legs don't work. But everything else should have been... He was disabled, lame, the opposite of ability. So we, he celebrated his inabilities by not doing anything instead of celebrating his abilities by doing the best he could with what he had. I thank God. Listen, I just want to clap for the people in here who did the best they could with what they had. I just, I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate you. As your pastor, I celebrate you. You did the best you could with what you have. Some of y'all, some of these people's stories will scare the hell out of you. I mean like the literal hell. I don't mean, I wasn't trying to cuss. <laughs> some of y'all had a hard time saying ass earlier in the thing. Release your... Is that in there? Where's my Bible? <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, here, 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 you all got me off topic. Okay, so the lame man, Jesus looked at him and said, well, I'll be made whole. And the man immediately went to giving excuses. He said, wait, he said, well, there's no man to put me in the water. When, the, when God called the woman over to him, she just started coming. She didn't blame nobody. See, you cannot blame anybody for your chains. You're going to have to start taking personal responsibility for your own chains. The Bible said with her doubled over self, she just started coming this way. It's nobody else's fault. This is nobody else's problem. It's nobody else's issue. It's not my ex-husband problem. It's not my kid's problem. It's not that I got a divorce or it's not that my mama was bad. Sometimes I just need a healing for myself. Soon as you somebody asks, what's wrong with you? Oh, there's, just, there's no man to put me in. A, oh, this will happen with you. Don't know what my husband did. You don't know what my ex did. You don't know what this person did or that person did. Stop blaming everybody for your chains. Some people I talk to immediately. What happened? Well, such and such did the. the what did you do? What was your party in? Oh, that bugs me to death. I could stay right here for a second, town, because that bugs me to death. 
the chain of blame. You in bondage. Everything is somebody else's fault. Everything is somebody else. No. When are you going to take personal responsibility for where you are and who you are? I'm just going to take my doubled over self. I don't know everything. I didn't. I ain't been everywhere. I didn't take all the classes in the cemetery. I mean, seminary. I'm just going to bring my doubled over self to the Lord. I'm just going to try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take personal responsibility. Nobody taught me nothing. Teach yourself. You got Google. Stop blaming people for your chains. Stop blaming people for your chains. I love that she didn't blame nobody for her chains. She just started coming to Jesus. So you got to get to that place, Amar. You just got to get to that place where you say, no, I'm just going to come to Jesus, man. T, you got to just get to that place. I'm just going to come to Jesus. I, it's nobody else's fault. Really? No, it's my fault. I, it's okay. I, I, I messed up. I didn't pay attention in school. I should have really, I should have been, <laughs> I should have been going to my class instead of going down to the, but it's okay. God's still going to do it through me. He's still going to use me. I'm just going to bring my doubled over self to the father, to the chain break. I'm going to bring my broken self to the chain breaker because the Bible says he breaks chains. And I feel like he's calling me. So the Bible says she walks over to him and he says this, woman, thou art loose. Somebody say, woman, thou art loose. Woman, thou art loose. Come on, say it again. Woman, thou art loose. You got you to gotta hear that in your spirit. You got to hear it for yourself. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I got to get right. We got an illustration coming. It's going to be rough on your boy, so pray for me. He said, woman, thou art loose. And I started thinking about the fact that she was doubled over. What he was saying was the thing that's got you doubled over is about to let you go. And I was going to celebrate that, but then I started thinking about what got her bent over? What's got her doubled over? And I tried to go all the way back to the beginning of her life. The, the Bible doesn't give us historic reference, but uh, I, I pastor enough people that I know what chains look like. And I can imagine, I can imagine early on when she got her first chain. See, those first chains are fashionable. That first chain is, is fashionable. Oh, I just smoke a little weed. I'm a social drinker. See, those first chains are social, right? They look good on you. They don't, they don't look bad. You could carry them. You, you learn how to carry the weight of those first chains. And when you get those early chains when you're a teenager or whatever, or you have, you know, you, 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 you're doing things you're not supposed to do. I'm going to be real careful in here because we got visitors. But you're doing things you're not supposed to do, and you, you start carrying those chains, and they look social. You bring them to the lunch table. Oh yeah, look, oh, I got this, I got this, I got this chain on. And eventually you don't recognize the weight of the chain that you are bearing because you're too early with it. Oh, him, let me help you right here. You don't recognize the weight. It was cute at first, but it's going to get heavy in a minute. It was cute at first, but it's, it, it's going to start weighing on you in a minute. And all, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you live a little longer, you go to college, you know, college get a little worse. And all of a sudden, the chains that you used to have, now they kind of have you. See, I used to like to smoke, now I have to. I get the shakes. I used to, I used to just like to, I used to, oh, I'm be careful right here. I used to, <laughs> look at y'all. Y'all some instigators, look. Y'all like, do it, do it, say it. I used to just like attention. Now I crave it. I used to just like, oh, ladies, hear me right here. You better watch out how much you like those likes. You better watch out how much you like those likes. Because when you fall in love with likes, you'll do anything to get them. 
Those pictures start getting more and more. And those chains start getting heavier and heavier. It's not just about the ladies, it's about the guys. Because the first you was just doing it to prove something to your friends. Now you're doing it to prove something to yourself. And the chains are getting heavier. And the chains are getting heavier. And the problem with a lot of us, Jay, is that we move from a, a place of like solitude or singleness where we have our own chains and it's sort of our own problem. But then we, 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 we decide that we need somebody in our life and now we hook up with somebody else who have chains and they chains become your chains. Now you get married to or get connected to somebody else with chains and all of a sudden their chains become your chains and now you got all, now y'all both got chains and y'all carrying this mess. Y'all carrying this mess. Both of y'all, neither one of y'all is healed. Both of y'all is broken. So now both of y'all get the blame for the chains that you brought into the relationship. Diminishing return. I say it all the time. Diminishing return. Diminishing return. You do less because she did less. She didn't, he didn't wash the car, so you didn't cook. You didn't cook, so he didn't do this. Next thing you know, y'all y'all not intimate no more. Y'all not doing anything. It's, it's getting heavy. It's chains. Chains. It's chains, it's chains, and the chains are getting heavier and heavier. No wonder she was doubled over. What, what, what was she going through? What was she going through that had her so far, so far down? Problem with most of us is that we, 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 get, we get connected, we get in a relationship. All of a sudden, now here come the babies. Come on. Oh, yeah, we, the baby is a chain? Yeah. 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 Especially when you got to take care of them by yourself. Especially when you, listen, 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 listen. I, I want to help you right here. There, there, are, there are chains that are both visible and invisible and you carrying them. But what's not going to be invisible, if what, what, oh, hear me right here. What, 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 what you think nobody sees, everybody sees. See, you, you can't fake being doubled over. <laughs> when those chains get so heavy on your life, you can't fake this. This is the realest it's going to get right here. This is real. This is real and real. People are like, I'm keeping it real. No, if you was keeping it real, you'd be like this. All the stuff you're going through, all your situation, all your junk, all your mess. You can't even get on social media without that feeling in your stomach right here. That you're not good enough. That you don't got enough. That you're supposed to do more, be more, have more. You... You in chains. You in chains. That's why I'm in. I'm gonna close my account, but you can't close it because you in chains to it. Chains and chains. She came in there, doubled over. This is what Christians do. You know it bothers me, Pastor Kevin, because Christians come to church on Sunday and they look, they do this. Blessed and highly favored. Oh, oh I'm, I'm doing good. The God is so good. You know, why do people start saying when they get saved, they be like, God. What God is so good. He just blessed my life, girl. Girl, God is so good. He just, he taking care, he taking care of those chains is choking you. You don't even realize, you God is so good, girl. <laughs> trying to dress up your chains. And that's the problem. That's why you run to the parking lot. So you, so you can double back over again. See, that's Steve, we learn how to do this. And they teach us this in church. They say, they say, oh yeah, no, you just gotta act like everything's okay. You just gotta act like everything's okay, and then it will be. No, 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 no. That's not oh no, 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 no. It's not just about acting like everything's okay. Who the sun says free, okay, but this is not this is not the pretend. Situation where I just I dress up my chains. Some of y'all, that's what you're, you, you, your, your chains so long and heavy, you tripping over them. And people see, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't even walk. It's tripping over your chains. And the Bible says she brought her chained up self 
to Jesus. See, man, I'm just going, I, I don't care if you got chains as long as you're on your way. Get somebody and say, I got chains, but I'm on my way. I got, I got chains, but I'm on my way to freedom. I got chains, but I'm on my way. The Bible says she was doubled over. She was doubled over. This is what we do. Yeah, listen, oh, I got to get done. Listen, I don't want to serve a Jesus who, 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 um, who's just going to help me have social chains. Who's going to teach me to dress up my chains. Oh, oh, Dante, you know, if you just tie this around here, you'll have a nice little... Oh, no. This is the kind of Jesus some of y'all serve. The dress up Jesus. The dress up Jesus. But I serve a Jesus who breaks chains. He didn't come to dress up my chains. He didn't come to make my chains look cute. He came to set me totally free. And I don't want to serve a Jesus who only work in here for two hours. I don't want to serve a Jesus who, who where I got I, I, I get the strength, right? I get the courage to stand up in here for two hours. As soon as I get back in my car, before I'm on 410, I'm toppled back over. Monday, toppled back over Tuesday, toppled back over Wednesday, toppled back over Thursday, toppled back over Friday. You get a little energy. It's payday. Friday night. Party's jumping. No, I wanna I wanna come to a chain breaker. I'm on my way to the chain breaker. Somebody say I'm on my way to the chain breaker. Doubled over. Broken with anxiety, with stress, with dilemmas with problems, with issues, but I'm on my way to the chain breaker. I heard there was a man that could fix my stuff and I don't know for sure, but I'm on my way to the chain. I heard there was a man who could help me and I don't know for sure because I don't know everything. I'm trying to figure this thing out just like you are, but I tell you what, I'm going to pick up my chains and head over to the man that they call the chain breaker because I heard something when they said there is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. And we get over to Jesus and he says, Jesus, he says, he says, he says, he says woman, thou art loose. And all of a sudden the chains hit the ground and all of a sudden the Bible says and immediately she stood upright and immediately she stood upright. See, I don't got to wait. I don't got to do a program. I don't got to go through a process immediately when Jesus get his hands on me, the chains are broken immediately when Jesus put his hands on me, the chains that once held me up broken. Somebody celebrate God if your chains are broken. Come on, don't play with it. Celebrate God if your chains are broken. We serve a chain breaking God. We serve a chain breaking God. He said, the Bible says immediately. Now I need y'all to hear this because I can, I can, I started thinking about the fact that if you walk a certain way for 18 years, the propensity time is for you to stay in the position that you were walking for. Even though I don't have the burden, even though I don't have the issue, even though I don't have the, my propensity is to still walk in the way that I walked when I did have chains. That's why some of y'all feel saved but not sanctified because the chains came off but you didn't stand up right but the bible says 
that she stood immediately. Somebody say immediately. immediately. God is the God of immediately. Prophets always want to tell you about 24 hours in seven days in 32 days. No, God is the God of immediately. And when he breaks my chains, I can stand up. No, no, no atrophy. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. No, no atrophy. See, 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 normally if you would have stood broken, bent over like that for so long, look, Karen, know what I'm talking about. She's shaking her head. The, the, the muscles in your back wouldn't work appropriately anymore because blood would have stopped going to the, I said blood would have stopped going to the, I said blood would have stopped going to those places. I said blood would have stopped going, but you are serving the God. Oh, Jesus who died on the cross and the Bible says he shed his so places where there was no blood places where there was no blood the chain breaker said I'm going to start sending blood to those places I'm going to start sending blood to those places I'm going to start sending the Bible says the people got mad. They said, you're not supposed to get healed on the Sabbath. You're not supposed to get healed on, on the Sabbath. We reversed it. We think you're only supposed to get healed on the Sabbath. Oh, just, oh, just Sunday, go to PD so he can pray for you. No, 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 lay hands on yourself. Lay hands, because the same power that rose Jesus from the grave is alive on the inside of The chain breaker is all week long, 24-7, 365, the chain breaker is here. I'm just gonna wait till Sunday and then, I don't want a Sunday Jesus. I don't want to, I want a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and twice on Sunday, Jesus. This is my, this is the last thing. I need y'all to hear this. The Bible says he, he saved her. He, he healed her on the Sabbath. They got mad at him. They got mad at him because he wasn't supposed to do miracles on the Sabbath. But the truth is, I, I, I don't care when he does it, I just want him to do it. I don't care when he does it. Some of y'all got a time clock on Jesus. Yeah, because you feel like you should have been blessed by now. You should have been healed by now. You should have been fixed by now. You should have had your miracle by now. And what God keeps saying is, I may not come when you want me. But when I do show up, I'm on time. What I need you to understand is if God haven't done it for you yet, you got to believe, hear me right here. You got to stand on the word. You got to believe it for yourself that the same God who broke chains off of Pastor Dante and the same God who broke chains off of Pastor Tap and the same God who broke chains off of Pastor River, he can break chains off of me. not about it's not about when he does it it's not about when he does it it's not about when it's not about the time listen some of y'all think y'all too old oh I'm too old for this I'm too young for this and people will tell you this man people they always got an agenda about your life if you if you buy the bins when you're 22 you're too young if you buy when you're 42 it's a midlife crisis it don't listen i'm not worried about what you think about when i get what i'm supposed when god is ready to bless me when god is ready to so he says this he says he says he says you would take your animal to the water if it was thirsty on the Sabbath, you would take your animal to the water if it was thirsty on the Sabbath. Won't you let me take my animal to the water? 
because it's thirsty on us. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. And it's not about the time. It's about my God. It's not about when or where or how. It's about the fact that my God is a chain. He said, he said, oh, you could bring your animal to the water. Let me bring mine to the water. Pastor Dante, what are you talking about? Well, there was another young lady who had water pots at a well. And Jesus told her, he said, he said, here, I'm the living water. If you drink of me, you'll never thirst. If you drink of me, you'll never thirst again. Jesus was tying these two stories together. He said, he said, if you drink of me, you'll never thirst again. Is there anybody who hungers and thirsts for Jesus in here? God said, come to the water. Come to the water. This is the moment. This is the time. Come to the water. Come to the water. This is the moment. I'm going to open up this altar. Not for everybody. Hear me right here. I'm going to open up this altar for the people who know you came in here in chains. I need some ministers right here. If you know you, if you know you came in here toppled over, you know you came over here in chains. I'm going to open up this altar for you and I'm going to let somebody pray for you. But hear me right here. Marsha, Marsha, get ready. Get ready, sweetie. Get ready. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, okay. I need you to hear me, though. In this other story about the water, hear me. Look at me. Look, don't, don't get distracted. We, we got stuff going on, but don't, don't get distracted. In this other story about the water, something significant happened. Bible says once this lady had an interaction with Jesus she 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 left her water pots she she not only stood up straight but she left her water pot you know why most of us are bent over because as soon as church is over you say all right y'all it was good to see y'all I'll see y'all later okay I'll see y'all on Wednesday we have Bible study on Wednesday okay I'll see y'all later Oh yeah, we got to, oh yeah, we got to deny the worship. Okay, I'll see y'all later. I, I. The Bible says leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. Whatever had you doubled over, whatever had you bound, whatever had you down, I dare you to run up to this altar and just leave it here. I dare you to just, if it's you today, if it's you today, and I don't expect it to be a million of y'all, but I expect it to be a few people who came here and you said, I'm doubled over, pastor. I'm doubled over. I don't even know how to do this. I don't even know what the next part of my life gonna look like. I dare you to come over here and let somebody pray with you. I dare you to leave it at the altar and walk away no longer bound, no longer bound, no longer bound, no longer bound the chain breaker is in this place and if you don't want nobody to pray for you you can come lay hands on yourself but I want you to come to this altar I want you to come to this altar and know that the chain breaker is here the chain breaker is here the chain breaker is here the chain